Okay, so haven't made a video in a very long time. I'm gonna to try to do this all on my phone and not break out the big cameras. So that makes it a little bit more simple and hopefully we can get this one done. New project that we're working on this week. We are converting my car right here to a new angle setup. If you know S chassis, they are a rear rack system, meaning the steering rack is behind the subframe. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, but I am converting it to a front rack using the WiseFab V3 setup. I kind of looked online and at least at this current time while I'm making the video, I haven't really seen any how to's like install and do the subframe mod at all. Uh, everything's on like the V2 or like 350 stuff, which is still good stuff. There has no, been no like tutorial, how to, step by step, other than obviously they send you the instructions in the box, which is nice, but I'm going to make a video start to finish on what all I do. All the problems I run into, all all the fabrication, um, and may leave a few things out here or there, but it's basic, But and I'll go over them. So I have the box up on the shelf. I've already dealt with the instructions. Um, I have, this is about how far I am going. I have modified, modified the subframe. I have fault. Cut out their templates, followed their design. I also chopped off the factory setup. Um, so basically their templates, all they're doing is clearancing for where the rack is going to go. If you set your subframe on the side, it's really easy to follow without the, um, the patterns if you don't have them. You just This is an S14, by the way. S14 and 13 are slightly different. Um, so basically... Follow this line down, cut along here, and, and gap out this section. Again, they send templates for you to follow, but we are just clearancing where that goes. I'm sure I'll have to do some kind of cleanup. I uh, used a plasma cutter, which is a little messy, but while I'm at it, I'm also cutting off tabs and stuff that aren't used. I'm gonna take the backside off of this, and I'll clean that up as well. There are a few things about these subframes that nobody really, nobody really talked about. So Nissan made a few different iterations of the same subframe and the measurements are just slightly off. And the problem that causes is really, they're so slightly off that they're not gonna make a different setup and jig for every single different subframe because most people are, don't even know that there's different subframes and they're not gonna even know which one to order. So they just make one that's a un universal fit, basically. Uh, which is why they can send the same kit for the 13, 14, 15, all that. So what you're gonna have to do is get it prepped up and you're gonna have to get this set on the front. This is what comes with the WiseFab. I didn't do any kind of assembly. I just set it on there. So what you can see is if I line this hole up, this one is out further. Like I'm not worried about the up and down because it'll, it'll get there. It's out like a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch maybe. So what you're gonna need to do is kind of find the middle of both, get it to where it needs to be. And you're gonna have to oval out the holes on the subframe a little bit to widen them. If, if yours is too skinny, if yours is too wide, you'll have to do the opposite. If you're lucky, it'll fit right in. Um, this, so I talked to WiseFab, this is accurate. This is what the measurement should be. This is what you should go off of. These subframes are 25, 30 years old now. So there's gonna be some bend and variances in them. Um, you kinda just have to make it work. You're probably not going to get a brand new one from Nissan. If you do, great. Um, let me know how. For the 99% of everybody else out there, you're going to have to make it fit. So I'm going to, probably off camera because I don't have a stand for my phone, widen this out. And you're only, only widening out the front one because you want the back one to stay located where it is so it doesn't wiggle. So the reason we can oval this out and it's not gonna cause an issue is because this piece is gonna be in there. And that is going to 
locate the hole where it needs to be and the bolt's not gonna move. So I'm gonna widen this out for now and then we're gonna need to get this bolted on. So I've kind of marked out with a Sharpie where it's gonna cut to on either side. And I'll come back when the when that's done. Uh, I'm probably gonna use like a die grinder to do it because I don't want to mess up the drill bit by trying to angle it sideways. Okay, so now <clears throat> I got these oval out and I got this bolted to my stud frame where it needs to go. Um, you gotta take this bolt out still. Um, and we're gonna be using an E46 rack, uh, just based off um, advice from E46 guys that I know and trust. The purple label and yellow label ones are good. Uh, so grab them from a junkyard, from a car that was like wrecked in the side or the rear or something. And they're pretty cheap, I think like 60, 70 bucks a piece. So I actually got a second one here. I got one purple, one yellow. Um, and then this is gonna be going in there. Okay, now that I have the rack in here, um, there's a couple things to note that I forgot so that you don't. One, when you attach this to your subframe, the bolts have to go in the opposite way so that you're gonna have clearance for your rack. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix that. You do it right the first time, you won't have to. Also, when you put the rack in for um, welding, they have these one mil spacers that you're going to need to put in here. I did not, so I'm gonna have to fix that as well. Once you have the rack in, you can kind of see, I, and I already marked where I'm gonna have to fix um, and clearance a little bit more. But once you have these in there, you grab the washer and nut, throw it on there, tighten everything down, and then you're gonna start tack welding everything around. All right, now that we have this kind of secured in here, not kind of, it is secured in here, um, everything should have relatively tight gaps. Uh, now we just need to tack weld everything in and then proceed to putting everything else on and finish welding. <laughs> So now that we have this all attached, well, relatively, it's tackled in there. Our next piece is going to be this support bracket. It really should only fit in the subframe one way, but if you're looking top down from where the rack is, this is how it's gonna fit. So it's gonna slide in there, and your, your main focus is going to be that this is flat here, this end is going to be, you can see that, it's gonna be sticking up. Don't worry about that, don't bend it. You fit tight against against this bushing. That bushing is basically gonna locate where that's gonna go. So, it goes in there, press it up as hard as you can. You can get a magnet to hold that down, and then we're gonna tack this in. Okay. This plate is now tacked in there. It means our next piece that we need to do is going to be this. This engine mount support plate. So we're gonna have to flip this over. And then, so this piece is going to go like this. It's gonna follow the curve of this. Kind of like this. Right on the inside of there. Touching up there, touching on this little piece down here, and then that's just gonna get welded to whatever it can contact. Okay, so this next part is, and the last part is gonna be this piece right here. It's so gonna go around the steering rack and over top of that bolt. It kind of, it's got a hook. Let's see. Got like a hook piece. It's gonna go around the outside of there. You can, they want you to use a socket, the 17 mil, to locate where that hole's gonna be. To make sure it's got kind of look over top. Make sure it's got even spacing. 
about like there, and then use a magnet to hold it on. But before you do that, it's really important because obviously you're fabricated, you already know what's gonna happen. Once you weld this on, you're not gonna be able to get to anything underneath it. So make sure there's nothing over here you need to weld first, anything under here you need to weld. Um, if you're going to attach these to the subframe with weld, do that first, because otherwise you're not gonna be able to get to it before there. They mentioned it in the instructions, but I just wanna mention it as well. So anywhere down here you need to weld underneath this, do that first. After that, you're going to slap that on there, throw a magnet on it, and tack that in. Okay, so now that we got this all tacked in, um, we're gonna let it cool down. And then all I have to do is kind of go around the entire thing and finish weld everything. Okay, so I was about to do this and I almost forgot to film it, but I took the rack out of the subframe after I finished all the welding that I could. And here's what we're left with. So I got the rack out over here. And now we are going to need to basically go through and just touch up everything else. So I'm going to drop some welds in here, drop some in here, around this. Uh, definitely get this because you weren't able to get that before. Uh, basically just along there, wherever you can. I kind of cut it a little bit too far, so I'm going to need to fill that in. Um, yeah, and anywhere else you can see, I, I cleaned that up already. I cut mine off to shave it down. Uh, some somebody might have have to end up chopping this further and plating it. Um, I don't believe I have to because my engine is already pretty far back. So we got all that that done. We're gonna finish up what we couldn't get to with the rack in. Right now that that is done, I'm not gonna touch that because it's all still burning hot. A little hair on there. Now it's all all welded up. I uh, got the few spots that I couldn't access, and I don't really want to touch it. Just touch it up a few spots, and now we're gonna let it cool. And then that's really pretty much it. Um, clean it up, test fit it, test fit everything first. You don't want to get it all painted and nice and neat and then test fit it and find out it doesn't quite fit. So do whatever you need to. Every engine setup is different. I know if you are on an LS, it is a little bit easier, well, quite a bit easier than the Jay-Z. The Jay-Z has like that much clearance. Um, I'll throw a video in now that a friend sent me of him doing his jay-z install uh, and there's like no clearance at all so the ls is going to have to all all motors are going to have to go to a rear sump in this situation there's a few different pans you can run um again do your own research um i know Odie runs a canton pan i am going to be running a holly pan uh, part number 302-1. Um, it's available on Holly's site. This is the pan that I think has the most available clearance and is going to fit the best. Okay, so now we're back. The subframe is done, installed, powder coated, good to go. Um, since I last was in here, um, so what we went over was you had to cut this, trim out this hole basically for the steering shaft to go through. Uh, what I detailed in the video, as well as what is detailed in Wisefab's instructions, does not include fitment for the lines. So you actually are going to have to cut it quite a bit further. Because you, you're going to have to have the two main lines over here that run along the back of the rack, as well as the input lines 
they're gonna come in right up here. So you're gonna have to clearance quite a bit, but just make sure everything fits before you go into your coating. And if you're painting it yourself, that's fine, whatever. But if you want a nice good powder coat, make sure that you do all your test fitting first. One last thing to cover. I took the car on its first test drive to car show. Um, everything went fine. I had to sort out a couple other things. When bleeding the Nissan rack, turned a few times back and forth, good to go. When bleeding the BMW rack, do it with the car off and run it back and forth like 20, 30 times, and then it'll be good. With the LS power steering pump on the car and the Nissan rack that was in it before, I was running a custom turn one 1.3 gallon per minute flow restrictor to not damage the Nissan rack. That won't work with the BMW. It does not provide enough flow. I found out the hard way. Uh, so basically all you need to do is if you have that specific restrictor or a restrictor on your power steering pump, all you need to do is drill it out. I used the 730 seconds drill bit, drilled it out, uh, rebled the system and it worked great. If you do have a restrictor in it and you're not sure exactly how much you want to open up the flow, just do it incrementally, step by step, until you get the flow that you're comfortable with. The more flow you have, the lighter your steering is going to feel. Um, the drill that I used, the 730 seconds, the steering might be a little bit too light, so maybe step it down from that. Again, it's all personal preference. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them below. I check comments regularly. And I guess that's going to be all for today. Thanks for watching.